Okay, the anomaly situation is more or less wrapped up. He ain't happy about everyone criticizing him. His mods are pissed off, but you know what? We all know what happened. And if he's not going to post the proof that he supposedly has, then everything else is just going to be water under the bridge. No one, no one's going to, no one's going to listen to him anymore, unless there are already fans of him, which there will already, always, always be a small number now, thanks to this situation. And you know what? I'm going to try to do something else. I'm going to try to actually. I'm just going to try to get back to my Halo Five review. Let me just. Uh... Oh no. God damn it, Deshaun. Okay, last time we left off on the Deshaun Watson story, it, we had 22 women on his case for alleged sexual assault, and uh, it wasn't looking too good. Wasn't looking too good even then. Now it's gotten worse. Uh, what has happened since then, you might ask? Well, Rusty Harden made the brilliant strategic move, in, at least in other cases, would be a recognized as a brilliant strategic move to say that all of the accusers should have their names put forth at least in the proceedings not in public For most people you would think oh he's trying to get them all to back out because their names are out there but considering beforehand we had one of the accusers literally speak up against watson we literally had one of the accusers speak up against watson in public revealed her name and everything we know her name that's kind of a dumb move to assume that everybody's just going to back out. And guess what? Only one woman backed out. And even then, you don't know whether or not she backed out because she was lying or not. She might have been backing out because she was afraid her name was going to get leaked to the press and she was going to get haggled. We don't fucking know. So only one woman backed out. Only one. So you still got 20 women standing firm. Holding their ground, we have at least 16, no, at least 14 women having their names put forth in the case for the trial. And they're like, no, we're not backing down from this. We're not, we're not backing down from this. So uh, that backfired horrifically. And then not only that, the, we have a new accuser. We have a 23rd accuser. Yeah, so we have a 30, 23rd person who has accused Deshaun Watson. So now we're back to the same number at 22. So we didn't really lose. They didn't, the Busby side didn't really lose anything in terms of accusers. So that's pretty crazy. And not only that, the conspiracy theory that the Houston Texans are indeed responsible for this has been shot down by Tony Busby himself because of this thing that I will go into later on in the video. But I want to go into how retarded of a lawyer Rusty Harden apparently is. Dude, when you've been going around the past few weeks basically admitting that Deshaun has been up to some freaky deaky shit behind the scenes, and then you tried to do that and only one woman backs out, and even then we don't know why she backed out of it? That's... That's not a good look, dude. Alright, within the past couple weeks, you've admitted that Deshaun's seen over 40 plus women. Or at least, you put enough names out there defending Deshaun that people were going, wait a minute, why the fuck has he been to 40 fucking masseuses? So that got people really fucking suspicious. You admitted, also, that Deshaun may have been doing using them for sexual favors as well. And we also know... That Deshaun has been going up to these women in DMs on social media to try to get some puss puss. Over 40 women. Like, what the fuck, dude? Like, how the... No, no, if I were Deshaun right now, and I were innocent in all this, despite all the crap that's going out there right now, I'd fire his ass. Like, no. Like, this is awful. How do you fuck up this bad? Like, literally, all you had to do with Tony Busby was just let him talk his, run his mouth. All you had to do was let him run his mouth. No, Tony Busby's actually the guy who's running the smart operation here. He's running his mouth, but goddammit, if he's not a good tr freaking plaintiff's lawyer. 
He's actually got the shit. He's actually got the shit. I don't agree with how he's fucking reacted to everything. But god damn it. He's got some shit done. So you have all that. And you make the boneheaded fucking move. And it is a boneheaded move. I'm sorry. If this were like a three to four person thing. And you did that. That would be a smart move. But over 20 women. That's a boneheaded move. That, that's an extremely boneheaded move. Like, come on, man. Like, what, what, what? How are you, how are you this dumb? How are you this dumb? And then we got a new accuser in. A new accuser. Let me, uh, bring up the article because I have it up here somewhere. Uh, come on. Where is it at? There we go. So, new lawsuit filed. This is by Megan Turner from Outkick. A day after one of the 22 lawsuits against Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson was dropped, a 23rd was filed by attorney Tony Busby. The new lawsuit filed Wednesday afternoon state the plaintiff's name. So they actually stated her name to start off, by the way. The plaintiff's name is Erica Chapman. She is a freelancing makeup artist who owns her own business and offering makeup services. And they also have a screenshot of the uh, of some court documents. The documents state that Watson asked for a massage from the woman in September and November 2020, despite her being clear that she was not a licensed massage therapist. Mm-hmm. During the massage session, Watson assaulted and harass plaintiff by exposing himself and touching her with his penis and groping her, court, court records said. Watson's behavior is part of a disturbing pattern of preying on vulnerable women. During the first session, the woman claims that Watson instructed her to grab his penis and that he eventually ejaculated into her hand. And now judging by that one SI article that I was going to make a video on, but I didn't because just Everything was going really fast in this situation, even with that big ball drop. Like, I was gonna, I'm, I was still waiting, and I've seen other people in the meantime actually have good takes on this. Like Brandon Perner of That's Good Sports, he had the most fair take I've ever seen on this. The most fair. He actually went through everything. He debunked the whole conspiracy thing. He debunked, well, not debunked everything, but he debunked the conspiracy thing, and he also said, "Hey, man, this is a pretty crazy case." And we, it's clear that Deshaun was acting irresponsibly. That type of stuff. That type of stuff. He was being fair. And it's like, oh, it's pretty damn hard to prove conspiracy in this. Like, it would be really, really fucking hard. You know. But anyway. That whole ejaculation thing, that is a pattern. At least according to that SI article. With all the other cases, I don't know. In an effort to finally end the massage session and hopes to be free to leave, plaintiffs finally did as Watson had been instructing her to do for what felt like hours, records read. And this is a developing story, so... Yeah. Yeah, Deshaun, you're kinda fucked, buddy. You're kinda fucked, dude. I'm... Oh, man. Like, I can't believe... That Watson, you, you have to be smarter than that to put yourself in a situation like that. Like, you, you can't just, you can't just go, oh, everything's gonna be alright, I'm just gonna have some sex with this sweet-ass massage therapist, and everything's gonna be fine. It's like, no, dude. No. That's not how this works. That, that is not how this works. You have to be fucking careful in the situation when you are a pro athlete because more bad shit can happen to you or other shit could come out. It didn't necessarily have to be about these sexual assault allegations. Like, dude, what the fuck? So, you have that. And also something else that happened, and this is going into the whole conspiracy narrative from the Texans' perspective. That the Texans, oh, the Texans are the ones trying to prove this conspiracy narrative. They're the one. They're they're the ones who put this all forth to try to get revenge on Deshaun Watson for wanting a trade. No, it's bullshit. 
But before I get into why, I'm going to go into something else that's really telling from the Texans side of things. Because the Houston Texans, remember, have been saying for months we ain't going to trade him. Then finally started saying, okay, we're going to look at some possible options. We're going to work up our conditions. We want a bunch of picks. We want a few first rounders at least. A defensive lineman that's really good at his job. We need somebody to help shore up our defense, and we need some picks to shore up our offense and defense for the future. The Houston Texans recently removed Deshaun from their uh, Houston Texans uh, from their Texans 360 show that they do in house, and now yeah, he's not completely removed. There's one shot where you can barely see him, but he's blurred out. Not not blurred out as in like they blurred him. It's just like the way that the camera's shot. Focusing on one guy, Deshaun's just in the background. But even then, it's like, that's really telling. That's really telling to me. It's like, no, they are firmly distancing themselves from him. So even if the Texans behind the scenes were trying to go, okay, Deshaun, we're backing you up like I've been th like I thought they would do. Doing that makes me think, they think there's some validity to this. And a lot of people are actually starting to come around and think there's some validity on this. And, uh, yeah, it's not looking too good from the Houston Texans perspective. And I don't necessarily blame them. I would do the same thing if I were, in, if this were any other athlete on any other team, if I were the, if I were the owner or GM or whoever is in charge of this type of stuff, be like, yeah, I'm going to back out from that. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do that, but that's some, that's some stupid shit. Okay. So you have that. Also, there was a writer for the Houston Chronicle who defended Deshaun Watson from the allegations, who was fired for doing that, but not because he defended Deshaun Watson, it's that he compared the women to terrorists. He compared them to terrorists while he did it, and got put out on his ass for it, and this dude was apparently a veteran writer for years in other, uh, other papers covering sports. And so you're looking at that, it's like, you're a moron. You don't say that. You don't say that until we got everything out there right now. And all the stuff we got out there right now does not paint the women in a net, in a bad light. It paints Deshaun in a bad light. Like, looking at it objectively, Deshaun, each and every day, looks like a worse and worse person. So don't fucking tell me the women are fucking terrorists. Especially if one of the allegations are true and that Deshaun literally said, I am going to ruin your career if you tell anybody about this. That type of deal. So, uh, yeah, that's really fucking retarded. But what are the Texans involved in this? Other than removing Deshaun from Texans 360. Well, <clears throat> this is a little, little story that uh, slipped through the cracks a week ago. No one's really talking about it. And I found out about this through Doug Gottlieb and his podcast talking about this situation with a sports lawyer. The sports lawyer said something about how Tony Busby is actually considering suing the Texans for liability if they indeed knew about what Deshaun was doing with these masseuses. And remember, he might actually have a case there because one of the masseuses was recommended by the Texans quarterback coach. So, yeah, if it is found out that the Houston Texans were not intrinsically involved, per se, but they at least knew that Deshaun was acting with some impropriety and was trying to cover it up to save his ass, mm-hmm, oh, that would make the Texans look worse, but still, holy shit, that would be awful. That would, that would be awful for Deshaun and the Texans. It would also make Deshaun's accusations that the Texans weren't doing anything to make him seem like he had a place in the Texans, at least as a voice, complete and utter bullshit. And it would make whoever knew about it that they get their asses fired on the spot. I don't think Cal McNair would have been involved with this at all. He's not Jerry Jones. Like, Cal McNair may be an idiot, but he's not Jerry Jones. All right. And so far, it looks like Nick Casario's actually done a pretty damn good job getting what he can get out of the free agent class and restructuring all the contracts to make sure he can get the most of what he can get. So he, he ain't doing too bad. 
But like I, like I said before, well, probably not in a video, but I think the Texans are going to be able to go a moderate six and ten. They ain't going to be completely awful. They ain't going to be completely. They ain't going to be great, but they're not going to be a disaster. So you have all that, but yeah, the fact that the Texans could be implicated into this shoots down the entire conspiracy narrative that people have been saying that the, the Texans are behind this all along. It's complete and utter bullshit. I have been saying that from the fucking beginning. Apparently people still aren't going to fucking accept that. Like, on Twitter, I saw one dude, like, what, after the article came out, after the article started coming in about how one accuser dropped out, a person's like, it's official. The Texans did this to sabotage Deshaun Watson. It's like, one woman dropped her fucking case, and the other 20 are standing on their ground. Are you that dumb? That don't prove shit. That don't prove shit. The fact that 20 women are willing to stay there despite the potential for everything to go south real quick, depending on how the case goes. No, that don't make the women look bad. That makes Deshaun look worse for the fact that these women are willing to stay there. So many of them. Only one dropped out. And even then, we don't know if she dropped out because she was lying legitimately. She could have left because she didn't want to suffer harassment just in case her name got leaked out, which it probably could. Like, dude, this is why, like, all those people who are saying, me too, me too, me too, this type of shit. This is why women don't come forward, because you guys are demeaning victims. In a case where it looks like it could be fucking legitimate. Okay? This is why women don't come forward. Because there's a blatant double standard with a lot of fucking people in this. And I'm sick and tired of people not talking about it. There is a blatant double standard. When it comes to pro athletes or anybody famous, like they're, they're always going to say some bullshit like, oh, everybody's trying to get money out of them. It's like, sometimes that's true. Sometimes that's true. But there are some really disgusting people, not only in the entertainment industry, but in sports as well. There was a freaking thing last week where a former NFL player who only got two concussions, two fucking concussions, murdered an entire family. Well, not the entire family, but he murdered two grandparents and some kids and then killed himself. And everybody's saying, well, he just had a concussion. And no, the con two concussions are not going to fuck you up like that. They are not going to make you act like a murderous psychopath. Alright, especially with what we have now compared to the 1980s when people were getting concussions on the regular and playing through them regardless. No, that's not, that not an excuse. This is not a Dave Dewerson situation. This is a fucking, this guy was a murderous psycho situation. And people were trying to defend him. Now whether it be because the guy had, just happened to be black and the family was white, I don't know. There are certainly people who will try to use the whole... Oh, he's, oh, he's, oh, he isn't a racism. He could have been. We don't know. We don't know anything about the, that whole situation yet. Like, it, it's a really fucked up situation. I really hope the dude didn't kill them because he's a racist. I hope he just, I hope it just happened because it was a, he was a fucking murderous psychopath. All right, like. That would actually calm me more than this being an act of racism. But we have this whole thing here. More and more. I, we, we're getting 23 women now. 23 women have come forward. 22 are staying the course and going after Deshaun here. And, it, and once again, this case has the potential to go right to criminal. This would go right to criminal. And the Houston PD is investigating. How does the Sean recover from this if he settles out of court? Oh, he could he could turn into a big Ben, but in the short term, how the hell is he gonna recover? Because right now it's looking like the Texans are like, okay, you wanted to leave? Fuck you with this shit. We were gonna try to hold out hope. Oh, but nope, you did this shit, fuck off. Then you had 
all the other teams are like, no, we don't want to associate with them. And even if someone does, oh shit, they're going to get the media hellscape of their lives. The shot's fucked. All right. Once again, we do need to hold out hope for evidence to come out that proves that there might be some other sketchy stuff going on, or at least that Deshaun might actually be innocent. We need innocent until proven guilty. But the more we learn about this case, the more Deshaun Watson looks worse. And the more, the more we learn, the more, the more, the worse it gets. And I don't think there's a way to get out of this one. I, I legitimately think he might actually lose this case. And that's not good. That, that ain't good. So, uh, until something else happens, uh, this was just an update on the whole Deshaun situation. Maybe something else happens, I don't know. All I know is this situation is completely fucking batshit insane. And, oh boy, as a Texans fan, this is exhausting to look at. Fuck.